hello there libras welcome to your reading um so when i was shuffling out this spread for you i saw an image of this uh little boy he's like a page a medieval page uh somebody who's in training um he he's not like one to to you know apprentice for for a knight i feel like he's an apprentice for some type of um um a doctor some type of a medicine man or something like that because he's in a um a, a, a room with the desk and a lot like huge volumes of books all around him so bookshelves and things like that and i feel like he's studying medicine it seems like he's doing something related to medicine related to alchemy related to um you know human anatomy or physiology or something like that so it's a very medieval type of a setting so I see this guy, he, he looks like he's 14 or 15, he's in training, and there are a bunch of books, um, thick, thick volumes of books just in front of him. And he's um, holding one of those uh, quill writing pens. And um, he's thumbing through the books. He's trying to find an answer. He's trying to like um, figure out something, solve a problem or something, something that is really, really theoretical, something that's complicated, something that's really um, occupying a lot of his time. So outside, it looks like, you know, through the window of the study, it looks like it's dark outside and he's got a little, um, a little um, pot of oil and there's a wick. So he's, you know, really burning through the midnight oil. Like that's what it feels like to me staying up really late to study something and he's getting frustrated because he's not able to find an answer to find some type of a solution and then he's all like i'm not going to be able to sleep if i um don't find a solution and he was all like okay well i need to take a break anyway so let me just go and you know boil some water or cook some water and get like you know make some type of something to drink that's what it feels like to me something warm and as soon as he gets up from his desk, he goes and, you know, pours water into a boiling pot. The solution comes to him. I see him, like, come up with solution. His face lights up. And then he um, scrambles back to his desk and he desperately, you know, tries to write out his thought processes because it seems like he has stumbled upon something that will allow him to solve a major major problem that's been kind of um tugging at his mind that he that that he's been trying to solve for a really long time so he's really really happy and that's where the scene cuts off and then i'm also seeing another scene where there are two um pages as well so they're like probably 15 16 years old um you know teenage boys they're in this grassy field and they're practicing um their swords okay they're practicing with their swords they're practicing fighting with their swords and they have these wooden swords and um they're just having fun going at it and then um like things are just really really fun and then this uh, really pretty young girl walks out and she was all like um I made you guys some drinks or some food, some sandwiches or something. And then as soon as they see her, I feel like the environment or the atmosphere changes. And then rather than just playing, I feel like they're getting a little bit more competitive because they're trying to like um, one up one another in order to impress her. So then the, the what starts out as just, you know, um, playful. Uh, fighting now it becomes a little bit more serious but at the same time they're not vicious with each other I, I just feel like they're upping the ante and mainly because there's somebody watching or somebody that they're trying to impress is watching their performance okay so then those are the two scenes that I saw for you so first of all with this first scene it seems to me as if um, there's a very very um, simple solution that is kind of like right in front of you and a lot of the times too you know when we go around obsessively looking for something we can never find it like uh, if you're running late one day and you're trying to you know put on your shoes put on your coat get your backpack together get all your paperwork and then all of a sudden you couldn't find your house keys and then you waste like another 15 16 minutes you know um like turning up your entire house trying to find your car keys and when we're in that that state where we are desperately looking for something or we're desperate for something 
The energy around us can feel very, very frazzled. It can seem very destabilizing. And in that type of an environment, it's hard for us to think strategically. It's hard for us to think straight. And it's hard for us to calm ourselves and collect our thoughts and to really, you know, sit down and just be like, okay, when was the last time I saw my keys? Was it last night? Where did I go last night? Did I put it in my coat pocket? Did I put it in the side of my bag? Did I put it on the counter? So it's almost like you kind of need to take a moment to really retrace your steps and to really arrive at, okay, what have I done already? What didn't work? Why exactly didn't it work? And bouncing off of what has already worked in the past, what other avenues can I try? So I definitely feel like, you know, you're desperately looking for a solution, looking for answers, looking for some type of a resolution to a situation. And it seems as if there are many, many ways in which you could resolve the situation. But I almost feel like the easiest answer is probably right in front of you. So you need to take a moment and, you know, try to really lay out all the options and all the possible choices so that you can arrive at probably the fastest and the quickest solution. Okay. So I'm sensing that many of you have been dealing with some type of a stressor in your life. And I feel for some of you, it might be like work, career, status, prestige, money, finance, okay? So all clumped up in that arena. And the reason that I say that is because we have these two cards that are coming through. We have the Wheel of Fortune, and the Wheel of Fortune is a major arcana card, so it usually denotes major life choices, big, big, big pictures, big turns of events. So this is not just about, you know, what am I going to buy for groceries um, later on today? What am I going to cook tomorrow? Where am I going to eat with my friends when we go out for dinner, you know, next week? This is not like those mundane, really insignificant salute or, or decisions that in the greater scheme of things don't matter. This is about big life decisions, big career paths. What do I want to do with my time? What do I want to build towards? What do I see myself doing in about five years time? Do I see myself staying in this situation or even this uh, work environment or in this partnership or whatever it is? These are major life decisions and it seems like there's like a, a fork in the road that many of you have recently encountered. And on top of it is the tower in the reverse position. Uh, change in housing environment, wanting to take a different path. So whatever we have been doing, I feel like in some ways it's like, it's not bringing us the emotional um, fulfillment anymore. Ace of Cups in the reverse. There's a different path that is kind of laid out ahead of us, the star. The star points us to the way. And uh, if we look back at, you know, when before the GPS was invented, before we had access to smartphones, people rely on the stars to navigate. For example, if you're in a ship and all you have access to are the skies, then you're going to rely on the stars in order to point you in the right direction. And then uh, even, you know, further biblical times, people rely on the stars to make predictions, rely on the stars to kind of point them towards the right direction. So what I'm feeling here is there is a new door that is opening up for you. And you already know that change is very, very imminent because where you are staying right now, um, I just feel like it's lackluster, okay? Either it's not proving to be emotionally fulfilling, or some of you might feel like you're not able to find a community of people, find like-minded people, or find people who jive with your energy. And you might even feel almost a little bit isolated, like you're not able to find that community or that group of friends, or meet new people, or you know have emotionally fulfilling even philosophical conversations that you guys really, really love. So with the Three of Cups in the reverse, options for uh, socializing, options for really connecting with people on an emotional level might be a little bit lacking in your environment. And some of you are potentially, with the Tower in the reverse, 
thinking about changing house, thinking about changing work, thinking about um, like branching out and creating a new social circle, branching out and finding more people that are like-minded uh, with you. And so I definitely feel an environment where you feel like it has really outgrown its purpose or you have outgrown a situation and you're figuring out your major big next step. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm feeling here with that first imagery where the answer is actually right in front of you. And I almost feel like, you know, you're, you're coming into the sense of awakening as to what you need to do and how this major, major new revelation or information or way of doing or solution is really going to help you, um, propel you to the next phase in your life. Some of you might be in some type of, um, environment where you have to produce okay there's either a lot of like sending and forwarding i'm seeing with the large volumes of books a lot of research even um i i see some people who might uh have to disseminate information to a large group of people so for example if you're in a work environment where things are very structured from the top down the top sends out memos as to how to do procedures how to get things done how to um, properly do something you read all the emails all the attachments and then you have to find a kind of like um, write, rewrite it into layman's terms for the common people and then you have to forward it to all the people so that they know the exact procedures or the exact protocol as to how to do something. So not only are you, you know, problem solving for yourself, you also have to explain it in a way where it reaches a large audience and it's digestible. So you're breaking down really complex things, concepts, ideas, abstract things and concepts and ideas and you're trying to make sense of it not only for yourself but how to teach it or how to give that information out to other people so it's it's almost like a transfer from more of a theoretical framework or more of a theoretical realm into more of the uh, practical realm what does this information mean and what are the implications of using this information in the real world? So I feel like you're kind of like that connector, that bridge to be able to um, pass this knowledge on to other people. So you're gonna be able to put yourself in that type of a situation. For some of you, you're really, really thinking heavily about your major career path, okay? There's something in the current work environment where you feel like it's not really serving its purpose anymore. You feel a sense of disconnect when it comes to coworkers, when it comes to your ability to blend in into a situation. Um, you might feel like the environment itself is a little bit too cutthroat for you. You might feel like the environment, and honestly, I feel whenever I see this card in the reverse and on top of the nine of wands, caution. Okay, this is not like a, a warning signs or anything like that, but it seems to me like it's a situation where you feel like you can't trust everybody, where you feel like people are self-serving, where people are not um, at their best. They're not supportive of one another. They're a little bit more cutthroat, a little bit more self-serving, a little bit more self-interested. And so you don't like to be in this type of environment where you know, you're, you're a big, big air signs in general or major team players. They like to share information. They like to share knowledge. They like to crowdsource. They like to, you know, pick ideas or pick other people's brains or share thoughts. Okay. Share knowledge, share processes, share best practices. But you're, you're finding yourself in a way where people might be hoarding knowledge, where people are not really um, they're, they're almost like secretive or they have hidden agendas, but either way, I feel like it's, it's very, it's a very self-interested environment and it's really hard for you to feel like you belong here or to feel like you can continue to thrive and to excel in this type of environment. So something like the passion has already, already kind of like, uh, trickled out in this type of environment and you're not really feeling like you want to stay in here any longer. So you're contemplating some major, major change. And I feel like you're mulling over the decision. You're mulling over 
if I were to do this, what's going to happen? If I were to take this other course of action, what's going to happen? Um, and I also feel there's a huge thing here about, you know, money is going to come in, maybe not yet, but you're going to feel yourself um, to, you're going to feel the ground from under you is going to start to stabilize. Okay. So whatever it is that has broken down, it's being swept away. So something better, something that is more in alignment with you can come into the picture. This is the nine of cups and we have the star card together wish fulfillment getting exactly what it is that you want and being in an environment where you are emotionally nourished where you are emotionally fulfilled and you are pretty much you know kind of like um getting it all the social circle the 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 camaraderie in the work environment the financial abundance as well as the emotional support and you're going to feel like the ground from under you is going to stabilize itself once more. And so the question here is, you know, what is this big solution that you have just discovered for yourself? I feel for many of you, you have come up with some type of a plan as to, and uh, what I'm feeling is as to like, how hard do I want to fight for this? So that's what I'm hearing. And the way that this is playing out, is for some of you who might be in a relationship where you feel like you have to compete with another person for somebody's attention where you feel almost like um you're in an environment where it's like you know showing up one another um you're trying to be a good sport about it but i feel like it could be a, a little bit of a competitive environment and competition is not something that libras um feel comfortable uh, thriving in so an environment that's conflictual or competitive or too cutthroat that's not something that you want that's what your your shadow side the Aries energy really really likes but I feel like for you guys you're very very uh, harmonious and you're very like um, conflict avoidant and you want an environment where everyone gets along where everyone behaves in a proper and polite manner where things move smoothly and communication is thorough and concise and so there might be a situation here in particular with a, a specific person that might have been contentious for quite some time and i'm seeing um, a lot of water energy, a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio, and I feel like this is a situation where um, it's kind of like on its last leg, okay? You you have been actively trying to revive it, and we have here, this is the Knight of Cups, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, as well as the Ace of Cups in the reverse. So I feel like, you know, there there was somebody here, or there is somebody here that you have really really loved and they really really care about you but i feel almost like you might not be feeling what they're feeling you might not love them as much as they love you you might not have your your 100 percent in this situation and some of you might be wishing to just you know exit the relationship and just kind of be on your own or to pursue other people the star card usually indicates independence, it in indicates self-love, it indi indicates as well like healing, and it indicates a situation where we might be okay on our own, we might not need to be in that relationship to feel whole, and we would rather, you know, be in a really healthy relationship or be in a relationship where we are completely in love, um, rather than stay in a relationship where Yes, there's stability, but there isn't that 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 passion, that chemistry, that love, and that mutual connection. So I feel like some of you are in a connection with somebody where that intellectual stimulation might not be there, okay? And the communication as well. It's like you don't really see eye to eye, eight of wands, fast, swift communication in contact. And communication where you say one thing and they just get you. You don't have to over explain. In the reverse, it can create communication issues where two people um, have to constantly over explain or two people, you know, just um, um, communicate 
on different wavelengths. And so it's not really conducive to a very harmonious type of a relationship. You might even have different hobbies, different interests, different uh, activities that you do. And one person wants to do this, another person wants to do that. And you're starting to see these um, glaring oppositions as well as these glaring life choices where I feel it's, it's almost like the differences are starting to drive a wedge in the relationship rather than bring you guys together. And then I'm also feeling for many of you, um, shaking off some type of a restriction. Eight of Swords, okay? The mental prison that we put ourselves in, the unknown, um, not making a decision because there are too many choices, too many possibilities, and we don't want to make a mistake. And this is a card where somebody is often very, very hard on themselves and, you know, they don't want to fail. They, do, they, there might, I'm hearing as well, limited resources to do all the things that we want to do. So we can only pick one of those options, okay? And we don't know which one is the best one for us yet because we're stuck in this headspace where we are constantly doubting ourselves. And what I'm feeling is, if this is a work situation, I feel like you have other options that are available for you that will be more emotionally nourishing. So make sure your emotional needs are met first and then the financial situation will kind of flow in. If this is a love type of a situation, I definitely feel there's another person in the picture. And I feel like this, you have another, so I, I'm seeing like two energies. One person might be from the past. One person might be somebody that you're with right now. So in a way, both people might still be from your past. Like you've known them before, but one person you're, you're involved with and you're not really sure whether or not to continue. And then to continue with, um, you might not trust this person as well. And then I see another person that you haven't been romantically involved with. And I feel like you're looking back at this person from your past and you're possibly thinking, should I give this a try? Should I give it a go? Um, there might have been some recent stoppage in the communication with this person. So I'm seeing possibly a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Aquarius here as well. And... I'm sensing many of you are looking for a new start, looking for a new path forward. And I feel like you're waiting for the other person to see if they're 100% on board with you so that you can move forward with them. And what the spread is really telling me is that they're preoccupied with a lot of things in their own lives and they're not going to be the one to give you that clear sense of direction. I feel like somebody has been kind of impatient with you because you might have taken a really long time to make a decision. And I feel like they feel like they have already left the ball in your court and it's time for you to make the move and to move forward with this decision. So this is what I feel is your energy as the air energy. You have to be the one to kind of uh, break yourself free of the self-doubt. And you have to be the one to make the decision and you have to be the one to move forward because the other person's just like, I'm done, you're taking too long or the ball's in your court, now you need to move. Now you need to, you know, bring your A game. Now you need to um, do a slam dunk. That's what it feels like to me. And so while you're stuck here, one of the things that I would advise is um, I'm feeling this is pretty much your advice card running right down the middle. We have here the star, and this is pretty much the yes card. Should I go forward with something? Spiritually, the answer for you is yes. Should I move forward with a, with a person? The answer is yes. Should I move away from a person? The answer is yes. Because it's not really serving your emotional stability or it's not really adding to your emotional happiness in the long run, and you have other things that are going to be able to do that for you, okay? So the second message um, or the second image that came into the picture with the two kids fighting and uh, somebody, the girl comes into the picture and then the boys um, become a little bit more harsh or more uh, aggressive when it comes to showing, uh, showing off their, their uh, swordmanship. What it means to me is um, 
things can be very, very uh, nice and, and all fun and games, right? But whenever we have something at stake or whenever there's something on the table, which is, you know, there's something there, there's, there's, a, there's a prize or there is a, there's ramifications or there are consequences, that's when we get ourselves into this situation. And that's when we find ourselves overthinking, overanalyzing, uh, wanting something pretty badly and afraid that we might not have the skills wanting something really badly nine of cups and we might feel like we're we're afraid that we don't have the skills we don't have the proper preparation that we're not good enough that we're not really sure if we should go for it and the thing is if you don't go for it you will never know okay so you kind of have to take the initiative and you kind of have to take a, a, a few risks here to get you closer to the things that you want okay so um, I will leave it at that. I hope the reading is helpful for you Libras and uh, I'll see you guys in March. Um, one other thing, I have an announcement to make um, for those who are still emailing me regarding private readings. I am no longer doing private readings, but I do have a, um, a psychic that I've um, used her services for quite some time and I highly recommend her if you're looking to get a reading for yourself for spiritual guidance or for someone you know. Uh, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. Her name is Bridget and she is phenomenal. I left a link to her scheduling website in the description box below. So if you like to do that, just click on the link. I will talk to you guys soon and have a wonderful rest of uh, February. Take care.